Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET Web API. In this video, we are going to see the concept of model in Web API. So let us understand this. So what is a model? Model is an object which represents data in your application. So whenever you want to create a model in ASP.NET Web API, you have to create a simple C Sharp class. Okay, so here the beauty of model in ASP.NET Web API is that it automatically serializes your model to JSON, XML or any other requested format. And then after that serialized data will be written into HTTP response message. So I hope it is clear to you. See, uh, before this, we already studied how to return a simple value from the action method of a web api controller right and at that time you also observed that how our data get displayed either in the xml format or in the json format so here the only difference is that instead of passing or instead of returning a single value we are going to return the object but the serialization and deserialization of that object will be taken care by web api so definitely this do not happen automatically. Uh, there is a concept of media formatter which involves in this. And as we move ahead, we are going to see that concept. Here in this video, I am not going to include the complexity of that. But media formatter are responsible for serialization and deserialization of your model. So first of all, we will see how to create a model in ASP.NET Web API. So let us switch to Visual Studio. So we are going to use our same application that is Web API Basics that we created in previous videos. So here we are going to add a model first. So whenever you are going to add a model in ASP.NET Web API, you have to right click on this models folder. And then after you have to say add class so as i told you model is nothing but a class so let me add product model okay now let us add few properties that will represent our product model so these are our few properties like product id name and price now what we will do in our controller if you remember Last time we just created a simple array of string and we are just displaying the names of product. Now what we will do, we will create an array or list of product class and then we store other details also like product ID, name and price. So let me create a list of product here. So here I am going to initialize a list of product with some static data. And I'm going to keep it at a controller level. So here we are getting an error because uh, we have to use this namespace because our product class resides in models namespace. I have to include that namespace in my controller. So that's done. So we have three products now. I use the concept of list which is nothing but a generic collection and then using list initializer or collection initializer and object initializer i initialize this list now let us remove this line now we are not going to use string of products now we are going to return this products which is our collection okay similarly here also, I am not going to use array of string here. I am going to return this product. Now, since indexers are already implemented on list, I can use particular item in the list using the indexer symbol. That is products of i like this in a square bracket. Okay. So, here we have only three products. So, my upper bound is going to be two. That's why I just change this and we are done. So I just kept all the methods as it is, but instead of using 
a products array of string i am using a collection of product that's it and now we are going to observe the output okay so let us switch to postman but before that i have to run my application then only we can test it now my application is in a running state now we will switch to postman and we will test both the method so i already opened the postman tool now we are going to call the get request so i'll just open the request in the history section but suppose if you want to type it what you have to do you have to specify the port number then as per the root configuration we have used api word there and then after we have to specify our controller name we do not mention the action method name in web api for that we generally use a verb so that is my get request i am going to call so i have to specify the get now you have to say send okay so as you can see here we got a list of products and here if you observe my output is in xml format okay so this is the product tag then name tag price tag and product id tag okay as per the sorting order it appears suppose you want your data in the json format i hope you remember what we have to do go to the header section and here you found that here we specify accept header as application slash xml so what you have to say application slash json that's it say send and you will get the output in the json format so this is nothing but an array of object and each and every property will be represented like this product product id colon and then value so in this way you can represent your data in the json format so as you saw we didn't uh, do anything for this everything is done by microsoft.net means that serialization and the serialization basically here it did a serialization it represents our data as per the requested format that is either in json or either in xml so let us test another method also which is accepting parameter so again that is also a get request but the difference between both method is that one is not accepting any parameter and another one is accepting parameter so i'll specify the index here okay and again i'll say send you can see this okay the product at first position means we have zero position first position and second position so product at first position is this washing machine rupees 50000 okay now uh, you might wonder how how i specify this slash one if we switch to visual studio in web api config file you will found that we specified this id as a root parameter okay means we have a place folder for this parameter and that place folder name is id and we can specify it like this slash and then after we can specify any value and the one more thing is that in our get method get product method our parameter name is also what it is also id that's why we can mention it like this you can mention it like this like slash 1 but suppose if you want to mention it something like this if your name uh, if your root parameter and the action method parameter is different in that case you can do it like this equal to 0 send or the same thing you can try it from this section that is params here also you can mention your parameter name and then after the value okay so i hope you understood this concept what is model how we can create a model in asp.net web api and how we can use the model in asp.net web api so if you have any doubts or any concern you can write it to the comment section thank you for watching